And on Spotlight today is Nigerian actor Frederick Leonard as he shares why he believes Nigerian filmmakers should continue to tell more of Nigerian stories if they must gain more international audience. In this interview, Leonard, who is scheduled to headline the 20th installment of the Nollywood Film Festival in Germany this year, also expresses anger at critics who have labelled the industry as bad influence on Nigerian youths. Action! It is no longer a new thing to me. You have always done it. You can do your worst. Ujuma, what have I not done right? From the day that I saw you, I have been good. Nollywood actor Frederick Leonard needs no introduction. His commanding presence, method acting, smooth talk and eloquence distinguishes him in the industry. While he has taken up a wide range of characters in the industry, perhaps the role of a Casanova sticks the most. No, you are not my husband. This is your home. Often times, when you play a character, you're so believable. They say, ah, bros, that's what you be for real life. <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why fans do that. I don't know. Um, sometimes it can be painful because um, you're an actor, and as an actor, you're supposed to be different people at different times. You know that's your assignment, really. I'm 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 a pastor here today. The next day I can be a keke driver. The next day, but then again, the onus rests on me to give a memorable performance, one that um, suspends your disbelief. If you get what I mean, in the film it's called verisimilitude. So, but once verisimilitude is achieved, it is often said that, oh, that's how you are in real life, that's why you could play that. No, come on. It can be painful, as much as that is a compliment, but it can also be painful and misleading. You get what I mean? Yeah, so I do the best that I can, regardless of statements like that, to make sure that I make you forget you're seeing a movie when I take on a character. Most times, sometimes I'm excited with the individuals that I get to represent as the characters that I play. Sometimes I am disgusted by these individuals, but I become them regardless because that is my assignment as a filmmaker. That's, I don't play um, characters have picked. I go all the way. I have my struggles with these characters, you know, but we live in a society where we have to talk about issues. So if God has given me the gift to be a vessel you know, to be used by filmmakers, writers, movie directors and the likes to, to tell a story. So why hold back? Because I don't want to be seen to be that way. No, I go all out to be that character. So I hope that as we continue, continue to make films that the African audience would understand that actors are actors as much as we try to make them forget it's a movie, but we are not the characters that we play. This year, he will be headlining the 20th installment of the annual Nollywood Film Festival in Germany, leading out other Nollywood big wigs, including Victor Swago, Linda Sifo, and others. He believes the platform is yet another opportunity for the movie industry to market itself to an international audience. Yeah, Nollywood Film Festival in Germany. I will be attending because I am a brand that represents um, Nollywood. Or should I say one of the brands that represents Nollywood? But like you said, it's exposure. You know, you get what I'm trying to say. Even the biggest company, even Hollywood still, still advertises itself uh, through good work. So it's good exposure for Hollywood. You know, it is also a means to spread our tentacles as, as filmmakers. So of course, it's, it's a plus for everyone involved, myself, my colleagues, and the Hollywood brand as a whole. I think that Isaac Izoya, um, the Izoya Entertainment Group, I think they're doing an amazing work. It's their 20th anniversary. Um, I'm excited to be headlining. I'm excited to be coming to, to Germany um, to be with them and hang with the fans and have a great time. But most importantly, I'll be looking forward to, to sensitizing the people more about Nollywood, especially Africans in the diaspora, those that are not necessarily Nigerians, people who need to know more about Nollywood and what we do, you know. So it's going to be an exciting summer. You know, you can never tell a white man's story better than him. So you tell more of African stories. You know, once people can see themselves in the story, then, are, then it's easy for them to identify with that content. But when you don't see yourself there, it's a bit, um, you know, it's off. You got what I'm trying to say? Like, there's no connection, there's no attachment. You know, so why not Hollywood, for example, Nigerian movies, you know, 
has gained so much popularity is because we tell Nigerian stories. So if we want to expand, you know, beyond the frontiers of Nigeria and then um, the African continent, then we should market Africa properly to the world. Brother, <laughs> While Nollywood practitioners continue to find more ways of breaking into new markets, some industry watchers and regulators have accused filmmakers of cloaking vices and crime in glory, making it attractive to young viewers. Leonard is completely irritated by this school of thought. I attribute that to ignorance. I do not think that anybody that does not understand Nollywood has the right to come and judge Nollywood. An industry that was created out of nothing, Nollywood is the highest employer of labor when it comes to youth, without any kind of grant or support eh? from anybody, from any group, from any industry, from, from the government. So I think it is totally unfair. I'm a bit upset right now responding to this. I think it is totally unfair for anybody to sit down in their office and talk about a sector that you don't know about. If you have your reservations, why don't you come in, ask questions. Why do you people do this, do that, do that? We give answers, and you take the answers back and process it. If it makes sense, fine. If it does not make sense, then you can draw your conclusion. It is totally wrong for you to stand from afar and draw your conclusion. So if we, if we tell stories in Nollywood that borders on rituals, it is because we have ritualists in our society. If we tell stories that borders on Yahoo, Yahoo, and 419 and crime, it is because we have them in our society. If we tell stories about mother-in-laws that are wicked, you understand, that treat their daughter-in-laws bad, it is because it happens in our society. If we tell stories about what happens in Face Me, I Face You compound, it happens in our society. So if we're talk, talking about cleansing, let's also not forget that if you sit down and watch a proper Nollywood film that has ritual, watch to the end, you'll find that that character's end is not good. What is now the moral lesson? The moral lesson, what makes a fantastic script is one that is rounded. You understand? So you resolve a story and you resolve it well. So the moral lesson preaches that it is not the way to go. Look at every Nollywood movie from Inception. That's the Nollywood you have today that exploded in 1992. Okay, from living in bondage down. Anything that has ritual to it, watch to the end. So I think that that statement is coming from a place of ignorance. That is what Nollywood does not encourage. So Nollywood has not in any way encouraged rituals in our society. No. No, no, not at all. If there's anything that has encouraged rituals in our society, if there's anything that has encouraged crime in our society, it's bad governance. People are suffering in this country. Mama, you have to kiss a woman this morning. No, 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 no,